Well, I started to watch a sermon by a certain young person this morning who is in Pennsylvania preaching on the same text, and I had to stop because she was talking about something different than I was. But she had a good point at the beginning. Verse 11, the gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So, are the only gifts that He, and who is He there? Say louder. God. God. Are the only gifts that God gives are that some, that, that you will be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher? Are those the only gifts? No. Because if, when you continue reading, right, it says some will be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And why are those people there to do those things? To equip the saints for the work of ministry. And who are the saints? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Yes, all of you. Right? pastor or an evangelist or an apostle that's doing their job correctly is the furthest point removed from a person who's doing ministry. And that sounds backwards to us. But that's what the Bible teaches us. That pastors and those leading the church are those who teach others to go and to do. Not that they don't go and do themselves, but they are teaching others to go and to do. Right? Right? And and that brings us to our topic for the day of what is this text really all about? What is it really all about? It's my box of crayons, right? It's about my box of crayons here. Right? You know, you got your box. Because we all have our boxes of crayons. And and you use every color. You may not use every color. But you use most of the colors. And you have to have those colors. And if you're coloring a picture and you don't have a color and you really wanted that color... Then what do you do? You go find it. Or you, you ask somebody else to come along and help you, right? Because you have to have the colors to be able to color your picture. You need all of the crayons in the box. It takes more than one to make the picture. And this morning we continue our journey through Ephesians in our sitcom theology. Two weeks ago we talked about... Um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and last week we talked about different strokes, and this week we have a wonderful show that talks about how everybody has a part and everybody has a place, because you can't possibly do this on your own, right? Does anybody want to know what the TV show is? Play it. Now sing with me. Making your way. I thought I heard a thousand. Six. 
There was how many? No, it was more than six. I had to count them actually because they have a list. I found a list on the internet. I got 847. But now some of these were unmentioned. They didn't get any credit for it. Some of them only appeared in one episode. But it took 847 actors to make that TV show happen. That doesn't include the directors, or the writers, or the producers, or the cameraman, or the grunts, or the people that got donuts, or the people that got coffee. Right? It doesn't include those people. It took all of those people to make that happen. But how many people do you remember from the show? Name them. Sam? Woody? Norm? Right? Lilith, Cliff, Carla, Kramer, was later, yeah. Diane, Rebecca, yeah. Frazier, Frazier, yeah, we got Frazier. I heard that one before. So there's like 10 major characters, right? And they came and went. They came and went. But all of them had their place, right? When Norm walked in the bar, what happened? No. Okay, let's try that again. When Norm walked in the door, what happened? No. There you go. Right? And they all played their parts. And in one episode, I think it was episode number, the best part of the series is I can go back and watch old TV shows again. Um, is it episode two or episode, it was episode two, where somebody came in and asked for Gene. Anybody know who Gene is? No, he wasn't, because he's not a character on the show. He's actually the person that owned the bar, not right before Sam, but the person before the person that Sam bought it from. And Gene was known to be the person that could help anybody with any of their problems. And so this guy came all the way from California to the bar to talk to Gene, because he had a problem. And when he got there, Gene wasn't able to help him, because Gene passed away. So Coach steps up and says, well, just tell me your problem, coach. If there was ever a person that couldn't tie their own shoes, it was coach. <laughs> but he says, maybe I can help you. So the guy starts explaining his problem to him about how his son came home and he was going to be getting married to this person and he wasn't sure how it was going to work. And, and, and so he starts and just keeps explaining to him. The coach goes, well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe she just, you know. What, 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 what's happening again? And he said, well, you know, my son's going to get married. And, and he brought home his, his fiance. And his fiance is black. And it's white man. And he says, he says to him, and, and your son's not black. And he goes, no, my son's not black. <laughs> and, he, and the guy goes, well, but wait, that's not the biggest part. And, and, and Coach goes, well, you know, it's just, if they love each other, you should just kind of, kind of let, let this happen and support it. And he said, and your son's name is, and I forget what his son's name was, it's like Luke or something like that. And he said, and, and his fiance's name is, and he said, Rick. The <laughs> <laughs> coach just kind of goes, Rick, Bob. Uh, I don't know about that. that is, uh, it, 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 and he stammers for a while, and finally the father goes, the coach goes, well, maybe you should just kick him out and tell him that, you know, it's over. That, that's it. We're not going to deal with this anymore. And the father goes, well, I can't do that because I love my son. And the coach goes, well, that's the only thing I can tell you. Is kick, just kick him out. And finally, the father goes, well, wow, I really see what you're saying there. And the coach says, really? What did I say? <laughs> he says, if I don't love my son, Line to be who he needs to be, then I'm going to lose him. So I need to accept him as he is and to love him and to allow him to be who he's going to be. And, and because if I don't, he's not going to be a part of my life. And it's just like me getting rid of him or him turning around and running away. It doesn't matter. He's not going to be a part of my life. You see, it's all about us playing our parts and doing what God has called us to do. Because this verse here says, in verse 4, there is one body. Actually, there is no there is. In the Greek, it's one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. There's one 
faith, one baptism, one God, one spirit that unites the one body. And then verse 7 in our translation says, But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. And here's the thing that we miss, and the reason that translations don't always work. Verse 7 actually starts with the word one. Verse 4 starts with the word one. Verse 5 starts with the word one. Verse 6 starts with the word one. Verse 7 starts with the word one. You received the one grace that was given to each of you. We are united in that one body that God has called us all to. And each one of us has been given a gift. And each one of us play a part in that body. And each one of us have something that we have to give. And the good news about this is, is we don't have to do everything by ourselves. We don't have to go it alone. Not only is Jesus always going to be with us, but everybody in the body is always going to be with us. Because each one of us has that part to play. Nobody has to do it all. Right? Because this body, how many parts are there in your body? Um, how many? <coughs> many? Any nurses in the no grades and anatomy? The book, the book not, the, not the TV show. <laughs> How many parts? Not bones, parts. The, the last version of Grey's Anatomy I saw said there's over 13,000 parts to your body. Right? And each one of them does something so that your body can keep moving. Each one of them has a part to play that is integral for that piece and that part. And if that part doesn't do it, then something else has to step up and take place of it, or that doesn't get done. And some, how many of those parts do we see? Hardly any, because they're all in. I hope you don't get to see them, because they're all in here. If you're seeing them, then something, something's bad. <coughs> and they all don't get the recognition of me. And they all don't get the, the glory of the line. That doesn't matter because we've all been given a gift to use. We've all been given something to use in God's ministry. As I was preparing for this this week and talking about the oneness, somebody said, um, and I saw it a couple different places, that God gave us five gifts. <coughs> five gifts. He gave us for our journey, for our pilgrimage, for our walking through life. He guesses what they might be. Three of them start with W. Water. Word. Wine. Wine. Bread. Water. Word. Bread. Wine. And the fifth one is one another. He already told us that he was going to be with us, and he promises through all of that, through the water, through the word, through the bread, and through the wine, that's where God joins us. And he's always with us. And not only do we have that, but we have one another. Because God has knit us together into one body, and given you a gift to use in that one body. And that's what he's called each and every one. So, like cheers, know that each one of us has a part to play, that each one of us has a place in the building, that each one of us has a place that we can go, that people are going to know us, and people are going to love us, and people are going to accept us beyond what everybody else in the world says, because God has called us to love each other, and to show each other His love. So remember that, and go into the world, and help everyone else see just how much. Thank you.